today we are going to talk about what is known as energy transfer. If you have a book, it is on chapter sound, it is an energy electron transfer. Before that, we have a test on Monday, 10 o'clock to 11.30. You don't need that much time. Maybe you can finish in half an hour. But we have it around. And you can use the PDF files of all the lectures. It will cover things up to, to today, all the way up to this one. So you can that. Okay. And then, so today we are going to talk about. Have you heard of something called energy transfer? Heard? Yeah. Okay. That's good. Okay. We're just going back to the the old one. So we are talking about we can produce excited single state by direct light absorption. That is because the excision coefficient for absorption is fairly high. It will be between like 100 to 2 to the power of 4. So You can you cannot produce a triple state by direct light absorption because this excision coefficient is very small. That means this particular transition going from a zero to T1 is spin forbidden. That means the electron has to change the spin during the absorption of light, which it cannot do. So you can produce a single, but you cannot produce the triple. That way, direct light absorption. If you do the light of the molecule, you can go to the singlet, but it will not go to the triplet. On the other hand, after the molecule goes to the excited singular state, it can undergo what is called as linear system crossing and go from here to here. So the molecule, it can directly absorb the light from S0 to S1. And in S1, it can move to T1. So every molecule will have excited singlet, excited triplet. And you can produce the excited singlet by direct light absorption. Excited triplet, you cannot produce by direct light absorption. It will have to depend upon this rate constant. If this rate constant is small, then you will not produce this. If it is large, so the question is, suppose you want to produce the triplet of a molecule. You cannot produce by light absorption. And if this is small, you cannot produce it. Then there is how do you produce the triplet of various molecules. Okay? So you remember this diagram yesterday we talked about. So here, this molecule it is chloronaphthalene. The rate constant for the inter-system crossing is to the power of sound. And this molecule, the rate constant for inter-system crossing is 10 to the power of love. So, when you excite this molecule, it will go here. But it will not go here because it is, this process is going to be slow compared to other things. So, there is going to be only small percentage of the molecule will go to the children. In this case, if you notice, the inter-system crossing is 10 to the power of 11 and everything else is smaller. So when you excite the molecule from S0 to S1, it will undergo inter-system crossing and go to the third from where it will be at. So some molecule, you can produce a triplet. For some molecule, you cannot produce a triplet by direct rate of power. Now, we can use some of these molecules which you produce the triplet to produce the triplet of these molecules. So that is called as energy transfer. You, you transfer the energy from this molecule to that molecule. There is a distinct difference between this molecule and this. Here, when you excite it, you will go to the triplet with a quantum efficiency of 100%. 
and this molecule will go to the, the, the triplet with the efficiency of about 6 percent, so it's very small. So what you can do is, you can excite this molecule when it goes to the triplet and then that energy you can transfer from that molecule to another molecule and when it does transfer, that will produce the triplet. That is called as energy transfer. It is a very useful technique by which you produce the spin forbidden excited states of molecules. Okay. You follow up to this? Up to this point you follow? Okay. Now, how do you produce this particular process is here? Basically, what is going to happen is you have a molecule one and another molecule two. Molecule 1, you shine light, that will get excited. Now, this molecule does not absorb the light. But when this molecule and that molecule, when they collide, they will form a complex. That is sort of, you know, so the two molecules, they are both, this is excited, this is in the ground state, they come around, they hit each other. And when they hit each other for a short time, they stay together. And when they stay together, what will have to be? The energy will be transferred from here to here. So now if you notice, this has this is in the ground state and that is in the excited state. So basically what has happened is the star which represents the excited state is now on this one. But this one has come back to the ground state, and these two molecules separate. This is become excited, that is become ground. Okay. So this is what is called as energy transfer. That is, you are transferring the energy from this molecule to that one. So basically, what should happen is this is called as donor that is going to give the energy, and this is called as acceptor, which is accepting the energy. So this molecule, so then this one depends upon the diffusion constant, how fast the molecule they come together. So, so this molecule here is excited, and this molecule here, different molecule, which is in the ground state, and this molecule when it is excited, they come around, they collide. And then when it is colliding, which is a this molecule transfer energy to this, and when they separate. This will be excited, that will be in the ground state. Okay. How fast it is going to happen depends upon how fast they can come together. How fast they can come together in solution, it depends upon the diffusion constant. The diffusion is how, how fast the molecules move in solution. So, the energy transfer as such is very fast. So, when these two molecules they hit each other, energy can be transferred. But then, getting together, it will take some time. Okay? So, the diffusion constant, which is here, it is defined by this number here. It depends upon the temperature and the viscosity. So, if you have, for example, hexane, the diffusion constant is large. If you have, for example, oil or, or uh, uh, some water, for example, the heat can be slow. You know, the viscosity of some, some of them are very viscous, oil, and then some of them are not very viscous. So the molecules will move. If the viscosity is very low, they can move very fast. If the viscosity is uh, high, then they will be moving slow. So this rate constant for energy transfer is going to depend upon this one. Okay? So you follow to this? Or to this you follow? Now, so the diffusion constant is measured in terms of what is called as points. So the viscosity, for example, hexane, and then benzene, each solvent number is different. So how fast the energy transfer will take place will depend upon this solvent. If the solvent is very viscous, it will be very slow. If the solvent is not very viscous, it will be faster. So normally the diffusion constant is around in this range, 10 to the power of 10. Uh, so 10 to the power of 10 is pretty fast. 
So the multiple molecules in the solution, they move around very quickly. And then when they fall into the excited, it is moving around, and then they hit, then the energy will get transferred, and then they move away from each other. Okay? Now, the question is, when the energy is transferred, will it happen all the time? So if these two molecules hit each other, will the energy will get transferred from here to here? They will depend upon some rules. Okay? So that's what we want to know. What are the rules? Okay? Okay, so when this is uh, number one, number one means single. And then, so when this molecule is excited, and that molecule is in the ground state, when they collide with each other, basically this molecule, the electron is one here, one there, this one both are on the bottom, and then when it is finished, that electron will come down, this electron will go up. So this one, when it is finished, this molecule is excited to the singular state. So there are two states possible for each molecule. Do you remember what are those two? What are those two states? What are the two states that are possible for each molecule? So each molecule will have a <coughs> singlet and a triplet. Right, there is a ground state, the first excited singlet state, and the first excited triplet state. So the triplet is different from singlet. The triplet has got two electrons with the same spin, and singlet has got two electrons with the opposite spin. Okay? So when this molecule is excited, it can be in the singlet state or it can be in the triplet state. Uh, similarly, when this molecule is excited, this, this star tells you the molecule is excited. It is not in the ground state. When it is in the ground state, either there is nothing there or there will be a zero. Okay. So this molecule can be polarized. So we can transfer the energy. This star has moved from here to here. And then one has moved from here to here. So this is excited singular state. Okay. And then the other possibility is this molecule is the same one. It is excited. It is in the similar state. This molecule is in the ground state. These are two different molecules. These are not the same molecules. So when this molecule <coughs> interacts with that, as we see here, the star has moved from here to here. And then the number one is no longer number one, it is number three. So this molecule, when it is transferring the energy from here to here, this is using for the same energy to go from the ground state to the excited triplet states. Okay. So this one is excited and this is in the ground state, this is in the ground that is excited and so there is an energy has been transferred from here to here but that energy has been used to by the second molecule to go from the ground state to the triplet state. Okay. And then the other possibility is you remember the picture that I showed you at Benzophenol. Like it had a very high intersystem cost. That means when you excite it, you will produce a triplet. So when you produce a triplet, you will have this molecule, that is this D, which is a donor, it is in the excited state, but number three means it is in the triplet state. So this molecule A, when they come and collide with this molecule, now what will happen is this star moves over here, that is this, but the three now becomes one. That means the energy of this molecule is used by this to go to the singular state. Okay. So for every molecule there is a singular and a triplet. So this is singular and this molecule is singular and triplet. So this is triplet, now this is singular, and the last one is this is a triplet, that is the same one as this. When this molecule is colliding, what will happen is the star moves from here to here. So this becomes star. Now three shifts from here to here for this little 
So this is how every one of these things is energy transfer. The energy of this molecule has been transferred to energy of that molecule. So this molecule in all cases becomes excited. In all cases, this molecule is losing energy and coming to the ground state. Now, when the energy is transferred, whether the second molecule is going to the same state or different state, that is that's a different particle. So each one has a slightly different name. This one is a singlet, singlet. So it's called a singlet, singlet energy transfer. This one is a singlet and a triplet. So it's called as singlet, triplet energy transfer. This one is called as triplet, singlet energy transfer, triplet, triplet energy transfer. Okay, there are four of these things. Okay, now, if, if you already know, when you have some kind of a phenomenon, the, the spin change is not easy. So changing the spin from singlet to the triplet, or triplet back to the singlet, it requires very special mechanism, that is the spin of the couple. It is very slow. Okay. So now, this side is singlet, that side is singlet. This side is singlet, that side is triplet. This side is triplet, that side is singlet. This is triplet, that is triplet. Of these one, two, three, four, tell me which one is easy, which one is very difficult. Okay. This is basically what has to happen is when these two molecules excite, ground state, they interact and then they separate. So the electrons of this gets exchanged. Now this is singlet, then it becomes singlet. Uh, this is singlet, then it becomes a triplet. This is triplet, and then it becomes singlet, and the triplet becomes a triplet. Okay. So of these four, which one is most likely? Most likely. Number three, this one. This one. This is most likely. Okay. You have anybody else?
which one is most likely? Next, one, two, three, four. Naphthalene is known. Naphthalene is known. So, if you want to produce a triplet of naphthalene, 
the sensitizer should be, or the donor should be higher in energy than the excitor because for this molecule to go to the excited state, this much of energy is needed. That much of this molecule that is transferring energy should have more than this. Suppose this molecule has energy over here, that energy is not sufficient to take this molecule from this place to that place. So as she said, the equal energy is okay, but equal energy, more than equal energy, if it is higher than equal, is much better. Okay. Okay. Suppose you have the acceptor one, acceptor and acceptor, this one and or this one. For example, you have a donor like this. Okay. There are two acceptors. Which one will work out? Which of the two will likely to if you have, there is one acceptor here, another acceptor here, if you have this molecule and these two molecules in solution, to which it will transfer the energy? Step one. The next one. Step one? Yeah. Step one is yeah. Okay, so if you notice this one is lower than this and that one is higher than that, so this is, there is not enough energy for this molecule to go to the excited state. So this is not a good donor for this molecule. But on the other hand, this will be a good donor for this molecule. So the, basic, the first rule is for the energy transfer to work out, the energy of the donor must be higher than the acceptor. If it is not higher than the acceptor, now as she said, it can be equal, but equal is going to be a slow uh, transfer. Okay? And so this one, if you notice, the donor is higher than the acceptor, and in this case, it is not allowed, it is forbidden, because the acceptor is higher than the donor. Okay, this is simple. Okay, now, how do you figure out something is higher or higher? You know, so you, you, you cannot just, uh, so we can take the absorption spectrum and the emission spectrum. This is the emission from this compound, that is the donor, and the emission is over here. And this is the absorption spectrum of the acceptor, it is over here. So the energy actually is going from this side to that side. And this is actually plotted in frequency. So, so the, if you look at the emission, the emission of this molecule is at a higher wavelength compared to the absorption of the other molecule. So this is what is called, see this, this is the overlap of these two is the most important. When you have a donor and the acceptor, you take the emission spectrum of the donor, the fluorescent spectrum, or, and then you take the absorption spectrum of the acceptor and you put on top of each other and there should be some place there is an overlap. If it is separated like this, that means it is not good. So it should be closer. And how efficiently the energy transfer will take place will depend upon this overlap. This overlap we see here. This is the limit where it is overlapping the emission absorption spectrum, emission spectrum, and then you see this if you integrate this, and that integral is called as overlap integral, and that is going to be important. The larger it is, better it is. Okay? And <coughs> really, if you want to get some numbers, sir, then you have to worry about the exchange coefficient and then the intensity of all this stuff. But if you really want to worry about the energy gap between the two, just look for the overlap. Okay. So, this overlap integral. So, if you remember, if I want to excite a molecule, what is the most important thing that I have to do? If I want to take this molecule to the ground state, to the excited state, what is the most important thing you need? Okay. If you want to take a shower, what is the most important thing you need? Water. Without water, you cannot take a bath. Okay. So if you want to take this molecule from here to here, what is the thing, most important thing you need? Yeah, energy or light, we use them in the form of light. Okay? 
So, so the but in this case, when the energy transfer is taking place, there is no light is involved. Okay. So the first light is used only to excite the donor. To excite the acceptor, they are not using any light. So whatever was used to excite the donor, that would be transferred to the acceptor. So there is no light is involved. So this energy transfer is called as non-radiative. Radiative means there is light. Non-radiative means no light. Okay. There is no light is involved in this energy transfer process. So there are two mechanisms, very basic mechanisms are involved in this energy transfer. These are very important things to know. So one of them is called as resonance energy transfer. Another one is called as exchange energy transfer. These two are very different. Okay. So, let me see. This is. There are not that many any other types of mechanisms for energy transfer. So there are only, there are only two things. Non-radiative. Uh, okay. Okay. But if you look at the book, there will be different names, but they are all the same. Okay. So, for example, there is. The exchange energy transfer, Dexter energy transfer, positional energy transfer. Okay? You will see the book. Some books will use that one, some, some other book will use the other one, or some papers will use something else. All these three are the same. Okay? So there is something to know. Because when you are uh, when you don't know, you think that for the so, so many things are there, I don't want maybe I cannot understand all of it. So, what happens is, in the exchange energy transfer, that is exchange, and Dexter is a guy, is a person's name, he is the one who put together a theory about energy transfer on exchange energy transfer, therefore it is called Dexter energy transfer. It is called a positional energy transfer because for the thing to happen, the two molecules have to collide. If these two molecules they don't come and hit each other, there is no energy transfer. So there is a collision is very important. That's why it is called as positional energy transfer. And it is called the exchange energy transfer because the electrons of this molecule and that molecule they get exchanged. So the all the three names they describe the same phenomenon. Okay. So if you take for the this molecule here. This is a molecule which is a donor. When you say the excited state, there is one electron here and one electron here. Okay? And then the second molecule is in the ground state. Both the electrons are in the highest upright orbital. If this is the ground state, this electron will be here. So the electrons, I have put the numbers on this. So what is going to happen is, if this molecule is going to get excited, this electron should go up here, or some electron should go up. There should be one electron here and one electron here. That will be excited state. And if the two electrons are in the ground, in this place, there will be ground state. Okay. Now, if these two molecules come collide, what could happen is, this electron can move from here to here. That electron can move from here to here. If this electron moves from here to here, what happens is this orbital has got two electrons. This orbital has got zero electron. So this molecule now becomes a ground state. And that molecule, what happens is it has, this electron has been the other electron from here has come to this state. Now, if you look at this structure, you have got one electron <coughs> here, one electron here. This is the excited state. Okay. So, when these two molecules they collide, what happens is there is one electron in the ground state, another electron in the, in the lowest or not orbital, and the second molecule, both the electrons are in the, uh, the highest alphabet orbital. Now, this electron will from here will shoot to this, that electron will then shift to that. So
So this is the best to exchange. So that's why I put the number one. Number one electron moves over to here. Number two electron moves over here. So the electrons are no number. Okay. So basically you have got to get started. This one has got one and one. This one has got two here. And when it's finished, this one has got two electrons here, and this one has got one and one. So the way this molecule got ex excited from ground state to the excited state is not by electron moving from here to here. It's basically the electron is moving from one molecule to another molecule. It is exchanging the electrons. So this electron it came here, so it gave the other, other electron to this one. So this is basically you know, it is exchanging the two electrons. In the process, this molecule came from the excited state back to the ground state. This molecule went from ground state to the excited state. So this is called as the exchange energy transfer. Okay. Now, you have any questions? Questions. So for this exchange to take place, do you think it can take place if one molecule sits here, the other molecule sits at the back of the room? Or both has to stick sit right next to each other? How does it exchange take place? They have to be next to each other or they have to be one there one there. Huh? They should meet each other. No, they should be next to each other. Okay. So they have to be right next to each other. So if it is not right next to each other, there is no energy transfer. So that's why it is called as positional energy transfer. They just have to provide and they have to be right next to each other so the electron can move from this to this and this one can come from this okay. okay now as the electron is exchanging this electron is going from this orbital to that orbital this electron is coming from this orbital to that orbital there is a spin associated with electrons right there is there are two things there is an energy and there is a spin so as the electron is moving from here to here and this one is coming from here to here, do you think the spin will be the same or different? The spin means alpha or beta. There are only two spins. Either alpha spin or beta spin. As this electron is alpha, let's say it is alpha, and it is moving from here to here, will the spin will remain the same or it will change to something else? No, I had I had one student like this. She probably I had a PhD student. She had a voice and all these very low. You know, I had a hard hard time to listening to her. So tell me what is that your thing? Spin will remain the same. Okay. Alright. So the spin will have to be the same. They cannot See, when it goes from here to here, the spin cannot change. So, if this electron, if it is alpha spin, when it ends up here, it will still have the same spin, alpha. If this is a beta spin, when it is moves from here to here, there will be still the, still the beta spin. So, the energy transfer will maintain the spin, uh, spin of the electrons. So, first of all, you have to have more energy. Then the donor should have more energy than the acceptor. And the second thing is that the process of electron time, the energy transfer will maintain the spin. So that's why it's very important. If you remember at the beginning, I said singlet, 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 triplet. Right? So if it is, this one is, let's say, the singlet state. And this one is a triplet state. That means, when you see, this one is a singlet, being, this is. Uh, Let's say this is this spin is alpha, this spin is beta. Okay. They have to have different spins. So this is let's say beta, that is alpha. And then when this, if it is beta, when the electron is shifting, this electron can have an alpha spin will shift here. And that will be alpha and that will be beta. When this alpha moves here, this will be alpha. And when this one moves, this is beta. And this is left out is beta, this is alpha, that is beta. So this 
the streams before and yet after will be identical. So if you remember, singlet, singlet energy transfer, and singlet, triplet energy transfer means the product is triplet. And then the triplet, singlet, triplet, triplet. Of the, there are four of those things. Right? So in the, the, during the energy transfer process, whatever was the spin on this side will be the same spin on that side. Okay? So there are of course four states for four things possible. Right? I told you. The, as you have the picture. Let's go back. So now there are four. One, two, three, four. Right? So this side of the spin and that side of the spin has to be identical. Because when the, when the energy, the electron is exchanging, the spin from when it goes from alpha, it go as alpha. So to compensate for that, the beta will go as beta. So the singlet, singlet. If this is alpha, that is alpha, that will be triplet. Now when it is ending up here, it will be alpha alpha. So tell me now, 1, 2, 3, 4, which ones are allowed by this process? 1, 2, 3, 4. Which ones are possible? Which ones are possible? Okay. I think I'm going to see this question from myself. I like this
Now you can see the right hand right is left here. So this right hand right is a triplet, and this right hand right is a triplet. So this e column is a triplet. This donor was a triplet, and the product acceptor is also a triplet now. So this is called as triplet, triplet energy transfer. So basically, we go from here. Okay. Okay, and see simple. After this is okay. So what are the more details you need to know, right? So suppose suppose you have we said in the beginning the two molecules have to be sitting like next to each other. Okay. But it is not absolutely essential that they have to be like going in a train, you know, the too many people are there, that okay, everybody is sort of crowded. Even a little bit of initially then you can spread out. So the distance between the donor and the acceptor will make a difference. Okay. So if the two molecules, one is here, another one is here, another one is here, another one is here. Okay. So all of them can exchange. In principle, they can exchange. But how fast they will exchange will depend upon the distance between the two molecules. The donor, donor and the acceptor. And donor and the acceptor and it moves forward. So the farther one is going to be slow. This one will be faster, this one will be much faster. So the distance is important. So the rate constants for the energy transfer, which is the exchange, it depends upon the J. You might have forgotten already. What is J? Do you remember what is J? emission, absorption, and then there was an overlap in the spectrum that tells you whether the donor is above or low. So that energy gap is important. So that, it depends upon that. And it depends upon the distance between the donor and the acceptor. And here yeah. is the Van der Waals distance. Van der Waals means it is very, very close. And normal distance would be far farther away. The it will be exactly the same than the, the maximum. If it is farther apart, then the, the rate will get slow. Okay. So this is an important number to know. How fast the energy transfer will take place, it depends upon how close they can come to each other. So if the molecules are very, very bulky, they cannot get very close. If the molecules are in a part of a big structure, one here, one here, that will be some good right okay. So the triplet, triplet energy, so this is very important. Triplet, triplet energy transfer, it helps you to make compounds in the triplet state. Because the beginning said, if I want to make naphthalene triplet, it will be not possible by direct light absorption. Naphthalene does not go from ground state to the triplet state because it is a spin forbidden transition. Naphthalene does not go to the triplet even if you put it in the central state because inter-system crossing is slow. Now, suppose you have a compound which is triple state. You have the naphthalene. Now you can see when this is excited, it can get transferred, you can put this naphthalene in the triple state. So this is the process by which it produces all that triplet, triple energy transfer, and this is the same picture I had before. Basically, this, this is the donor. This is the acceptor. And these two are getting very close. When they get too close, this one gets transferred here, and that one gets transferred here. The whole thing happens, and how fast it happens, it depends upon this is something you have to remember. Okay. So, <coughs> you think you need a book, from the time you will know. This is an important thing to know. This tells you the whether your donor energy is higher than acceptor. And this tells you how close they are. And this tells you this k. This tells you how well they overlap. That is, you know, when the two orbitals have to overlap like this. If this one is coming like this, the angle makes a difference. So how well they overlap will depend upon you know how well they get together. If the two molecules are getting together like this, like this, or like that, only one of them is going to be the best. The best one is this That is the we have to know the orientation of the molecule with respect to each other. Any other any questions you have? No. Okay. No questions.
All right, how do you know this is this happens? You know? I, I, can take, I can say all this stuff. So the original publication of this was in 1950s by uh, Russians, these guys. Okay. So for example, this, this is a pretty complex uh, uh, picture. Okay, let me see whether. This is the benzophenone. We had a picture of benzophenone before. So benzophenone, tell me, is it a good, uh, can you produce a picture of benzophenone easily or not? You can produce a picture of benzophenone easily? Benzophenone. Benzophenone is this compound. We have a picture of this diagram. We show the diagram now. Suppose you take benzophenone. You excite the benzophenone. It goes to the excited singular state. From the singular state, it can cross to the triplet state because inter-system crossing was turned into a Okay. So S0, S1 goes to the triplet. Okay. Now, the <coughs> Suppose you excite benzophenone and I see emission from naphthalene. Okay. What does that mean? Suppose uh, I heat her and then you try. That looks like, you know, somehow she, she feels the pain, but you seem to be feeling the pain more and more than her. So the energy is getting transferred from her to you. The pain is getting transferred from her to you. And what, is, uh, what does that mean? How do you figure it out? Okay. You look for when you meet her, who is crying? Whether she is crying or you are crying? You are crying. Oh, sorry. So, okay, so here we excite the benzophenone. And this emission, this emission is from benzophenone. Okay? Now, this emission here is from naphthalene. These are naphthalene. Okay? Now, if you have a mixture of this, if you take only, only benzophenone, that is, you just predict benzophenone solution and then take the emission spectrum and you see this emission. And then if you take naphthalene, make a solution, you will see this emission. Okay? This emission for that, that emission for this. But if you take a mixture of these two, that is benzophenone plus naphthalene, and then if you irradiate this benzophenone, you see here the, the emission is coming from this compound. You see all these emissions, this is the same as that. This is the same as that. So what happens is when you excite it, this is emitting. In principle, when you excite this, you should see emission from here. But instead of that, you see emission from naturally. This is what these people show. This is a very uh, famous example. You have, there are two compounds, benzophenone and naphthalene. When you excite benzophenone alone, no naphthalene, then you will see emission from that. That is this one. And then you only have a benzophenone, you have naphthalene, excited, you excite the naphthalene emission. So if we put together both, excite this one, this one emits. Okay. That tells you the energy is transferred from benzophenone to naphthalene. Okay, so that is the uh, thing. And as you can see, how fast it is, how much you get, it depends upon the distance between the two. That you can control the distance, this is in a glass. By controlling the concentrations, you can find out how much is the distance between naphthalene and benzophenone. And they should, this was in the 1950s. So the first time that this is like this. Okay. And uh, the distance is about to know. It is basically independent of what is the compound. So for example, you can take benzophenone naphthalene, bromo naphthalene, iodo naphthalene, there is always the distance is about 13, 10 microns. Or you take, for example, this uh, phenanthalene with all these compounds, it is okay. So basically, the two molecules will have to come within about 10 angstroms for energy to get transferred from this to that. So this is a donor, and with a lot of testers, and you know, somebody has calculated the distance by doing this uh, emission spectrum. So, it clearly tells you the distance has to be close. Any questions? No questions. Okay. I'll 
So I'm on one thing and then we'll stop for it. Okay, this one you see here. This is the same compound. Go ahead, that is up now. After the now tell me which is the donor, which is the acceptor. Okay, so how much you get this thing? You can take two years, you said. So, people who answer the question, you can take one cookie. Okay, you don't have that thing. Okay, so, 